Hello, my name is Dean Suzuki, and I'm a senior solution architect with AWS. Today, I want to talk to you about how you can migrate your data to Amazon FSx for Windows File Server with AWS Data Sync. For those of you who are not familiar, Amazon FSx for Windows File Server is AWS's fully managed native Windows file serving service, meaning we provide a native Windows file servers for you and we fully manage it in terms of managing the hardware and the software for you. A common question I get is how do I migrate my data now from my on-premises file servers to Amazon FSx for Windows file server? And that's what we provide AWS DataSync. AWS DataSync is AWS's fully managed data migration service. So with that, let's get started. Here's a brief agenda. The first thing I want to do is cover how AWS DataSync can help you migrate your data to Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. And then walk to a demo of migrating actually data from my on-premises file server to Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. And then provide some additional resources. So how does AWS Data Sync work? So let's say you have your on-premises file servers here on the left, and then you set up your AWS environment. Now you create your Amazon FSx Windows File Server file system, and then you need net network connectivity for your on-premises environment. This network connectivity can be over the internet to AWS, or it could be over Direct Connect or site-to-site -site VPN. And then we'll install the Data Sync agent close to your file servers. And this connection between the data sync agent and your on-premise file server is going to be either NFS or SMB. And then this transfer will occur over a secure TLS connection. And we will use a, a highly optimized parallelized tran parallel transfer to speed up the transfer of data from your on-premises network to the AWS cloud. And on the back end, we'll configure the AWS data sync service to copy the data into Amazon FSx Windows file server. Also note that the AWS data sync can also choose as a destination Amazon S3 or Amazon Elastic File System or EFS. So let's summarize some of the key AWS data sync features that help with the data migration. First, it's fully automated and integrated with AWS services. So it integrates with CloudWatch for monitoring, IAM or identity and access management for security, and also it integrates with the backend destination services such as Amazon S3, Amazon Elastic File System, or EFS, and Amazon FSx Windows File Server. And it performs integrity checks on the data transfer, so it checks the source and destination data to make sure the data transfers um, correctly. And it preserves the file level metadata and attributes when transferring data between Windows file shares. So it preserves the NTFS permissions and share level permissions on your Windows file servers on premises into the Amazon FSx Windows file server as a de destination. And it can accelerate data transfer up to 10 times faster than command line tools. So it uses a highly optimized compression and parallel transfers to speed up the data transfer between your on premises environment and AWS. And the data is encrypted in transit with TLS. So, with that, let's jump into a demo on setting it up. So in this demonstration, we're going to migrate data from my on-premises Windows file server into Amazon FSx Windows file server using the AWS data sync service. So here I am logged into the AWS management console and I'm going to find services and we're going to go to the data sync service. Just type in data sync. And now you'll see the AWS data sync welcome screen. I'm going to click get started. So the first thing we need to do is deploy the agent onto my on-premises environment. So as you notice here, we provide two options to deploy the agent onto your environment. You can deploy, uh, download an, a VMware image, or if you're running and migrating data within AWS, you can use an Amazon EC2 image. I'm gonna go ahead and click download image. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording here and restart when it finishes re downloading. Now I've downloaded the image and loaded it up into my VMware environment. Now I'm going to log into the image. And the login ID here is admin, and the password is password. And you can find this in the documentation. Now the key thing here I need to get is the IP address of the, of the agent image. So it's listed here. 
Once I have that, I'm going to flip back now to the console and I'm going to go ahead and enter it in into the agent IP address here. So I'm going to scoot that over. And once I enter that in, I'm going to go scroll down and hit get key. So what is happening right now is the browser is talking to the agent. And once it gets the activation key, you know the communication between the browser and the agent was successful. Now it gives me an option to set a name here. I'm going to go set Dean on-prem agent. I'm going to hit create agent. And notice it's online. Okay, so the next step now is to create a task that tells the agent to migrate the data from my on-premises file server to Amazon FSX Windows file server. I'm going to go ahead and maximize the screen. I'm going to go ahead and create task. Now it's going to ask for the configure the source location. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new source location. And it's going to ask for the type. And it gives me a list of types for the source location. I'm going to pick server message block, which is what Windows file servers use. That's going to ask me for the agent. I'm going to pick the agent we just installed. And it's going to ask the domain name or the IP address of my server, the source I, uh, file server. So in my case, it's Dean 2016 SR. And if I created a share that I want to migrate from, so my share is called Photos. And you can see some additional settings. So you can automatically detect the version. Now what it needs now is a user account that has permissions to read the data from that share. So before the video, I created an account called DataSync. And I gave that, I said, let me type in the password. And then I gave that account permissions to read from that share by adding it to the backup operators group. I'm gonna hit next. Now the DataSync task has asked me to configure the destination location. So I'm gonna create a new location. I'm gonna come down here and select Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. That's going to ask me to specify the FSX for Windows file, server, file System. I'm going to pick a file system that I created earlier. Now, if you need help creating an Amazon FSX for Windows File Server file system, I created a video on that as well, so, so you can find that on YouTube. I'm going to specify a share on the file system. I'm going to use the default share called Share. It's going to, you can set some additional settings, like the security group. Now it's asking for a user that has permissions to write to that file system. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a user here. Now it's asking for the domain name that the file system is joined to. So I have a domain called corp.example.com. I'm going to press next. Now it's asking me to give the task a name. So I'm going to say data sync on-prem to FSX. Now I can have the option to verify the data in the destination and keep deleted files, files, should I overwrite files? And here I can actually set the bandwidth limit. So I can throttle the amount of bandwidth that DataSync is using to do the data transfer. So I'm gonna set it to 10 megabytes per second. I can enable queuing. And here I can set a filtering configuration. So I can specify an exclude pattern to exclude certain files from being transferred over to Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. I'm gonna leave it blank. And now here I can set the task, uh, the schedule at which the task is executed, the task frequency. So I can say uh, if I want to run this hourly, daily, weekly, certain days of the week or a custom, I'm going to leave it as not scheduled since I'm going to execute the task manually. Here I can set some tags on the task. Also, I can log the task execution to CloudWatch log group. So I can specify that here. Now I'm going to hit next. And here I can, I can review the settings that I set. I'm going to hit create task. And that's going to create the, the task to migrate the data from the Windows on-premises file server to Amazon FSX Windows file server. Okay, the next step is I'm going to go ahead and start the task. It's going to give me an option of you again to review the options. I'm going to hit start. And this is going to start the task running. So I'm going to pause the video now. It's going to take a couple minutes to spin up. Okay, now that I let the task run for a couple of minutes, I'm going to click the running link here. And you can see how much data has been transferred, the throughput, how many files are transferred. 
I'm going to show you the source directory. This is that source directory uh, on my server, the photo share. And I'm now going to drag across. This is the target here. This is running. Uh, uh, what I did here is I mapped this Explorer window to the Amazon FSX for Windows file server file system. And this is that share directory here. So you can see the data sinks copying the data over here to uh, FSX. So in summary, what we just did in this demonstration is that we configured the agent to connect to my on-premises file server shown here. Then we set up a task to configure a data sync, AWS data sync, to migrate the data or copy the data from my on-premises file server to my Amazon FSX for Windows file server here. And with that, I'm going to go back to the slides. So in summary, AWS Data Sync can really simplify your data migration to Amazon FSX Windows File Server, and it provides a whole host of configuration options. As you saw in the demonstration, I set it up so it can copy your data over the internet. But if you have Direct Current Connect or Site to Site VPN, AWS Data Sync can use those options as well to, to migrate your data from your on-premises environment to AWS. You can perform full and then incremental transfers of your data. AWS Data Sync knows what, what it copied and it can pick up where it left off. So you can initiate, say, a, four, a full sync and maybe the incremental is during the week. And then when you're ready to code, cut over, initiate, issue another incremental sync to finalize the migration over from your on-premises environment to AWS. As you notice in the demonstration, you can schedule the data transfer tasks to occur, for example, during off-peak hours. So maybe you don't want to run the data transfer task during business hours. You can schedule that. In my demonstration, I kicked it off manually, but you could also schedule it. You can also throttle the amount of bandwidth used. So for example, if you only wanted to use a certain amount of your bandwidth, you can set that. In my case, I set it to 10 megabytes per second. So you can configure how much bandwidth AWS Data Sync uses to do its data migration. And you can filter which folders, files, and objects are transferred. And when we configured it, you, one of the things I mentioned is you could specify an exclude pattern to exclude which files are not transferred over. So that's how you can set that. So here's some additional resources if, for, for more information if you want to learn more about AWS Data Sync and Amazon FSX Windows File Server. The first link is to a blog article that talks about how to set up AWS Data Sync. So if you want to read through the steps versus watching it, you can go ahead and I highly recommend looking at that blog article. The second link is a, is a link to the AWS Data Sync webpage, so you can learn more about it. The third link is it talks about how to set up AWS Data Sync to transfer your file so it doesn't leave your VPC, and how you can use private endpoints versus the public endpoint that we used in my demonstration. And the last two links <coughs> are some additional information about Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. So with that, I wanted to thank you for joining. Take care.